shape or form a leather teaching class. <laughs> uh, I think, uh, hopefully you guys will see it okay, I think my buddy Tanner would probably cringe right now if he was watching this video of some, some of the things I used to cut leather with, but uh, um, I just wanted to give you guys a really quick video since I was starting to do this leather sheath. I wanted to touch in some of the things that I use, some of the things that I'm practicing with, some of the things I'm learning about leather. And ultimately, if you wanted to try doing leather yourself, um, there's tons of videos out there, so I don't know where, where this is going to fit in regards to being able to show you guys anything or teach you. So I'm going to put this under the Knife Making 101 simply because I'm a knife maker and uh, knife makers do have a tendency of wanting to make leather sheaths. And this is definitely one of those uh, rabbit holes that once you fall into, it's a very, 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 very deep hole. <laughs> so... Um, First and foremost, I guess this is one of the biggest things that a leather maker would probably cringe about. Uh, so many of those guys use uh, skives, I think they're called, or shivs, and they take their knife and they, they drag it. It's a special knife that you know, they pull. Um, I could get one at some point. I was even debating about making one. I'm kind of doing a little uh, video on that or something, but uh, uh, you can't go wrong with a 1982 or 1983 uh, Stanley knife. I've had this for, yeah, since that long when I used to do tile work. And I went through all the Carpenters Union classes and everything. This is my knife from that long ago. Uh, but uh, some of the things that I ended up ne knowing that I needed to do leather, is first and foremost, is leather. Also, um, uh, something like these little stencils. These little circle stencils and stuff. This is uh, Stadler or something. I got this from, uh, oh, I probably got it from a craft shop or something like that. But you definitely want something like this. Uh, you're going to need a mallet. Definitely do this, especially if you want to do any type of tooling or even some little bit of decorative edging like I do. Um, you want to do that kind of thing. Uh, more importantly, you want to make sure that you have yourself a stencil. This is just out of regular graph paper. Some guys use a, uh, it's like a plastic coated paper. It's a little bit higher end. But you want to have a master stencil for whatever knife that you're going to be making. Myself, this is for a Montana. So this is the knife I use or the stencil I use. Um, you want a really good leather for that. Uh, this is an 8 to 9 ounce leather. Uh, it's really thick, but yet it's not too thick that I can't work with it very well. Um, or it doesn't give me too many challenges. And then it's still thick enough that when I put a welt in here, which is a piece of leather that goes along the inside of the sheath, when you go to fold these two pieces, and I can't bend it right now because you got to moisten it, and then I gotta, I'm got i going to have to uh, groove out the, the leather. Um, that's another thing is grooving tools and such. Little hand tools. Uh, you definitely want one of these. This is a burnishing tool. This is what you use to rub the edge of the leather as you start to finish it and you round it all off. You're going to use this. You're going to dampen it and you're going to use this. So you need a burnishing tool. Um, I've used this and I've attached it inside the chuck of my cordless drill to burnish leather. So that works really good. Um, let's see here. Oh, you're definitely going to want one of these little things. This is a uh, stitch groover. And what's nice about it is it gives you these little tools see if I can get you, oh, I just dropped it too. Oh, already, here we go. Um, it gives you these little tiny bits and pieces right here. This right here actually helps you groove lines, and that could actually uh, um, be good because you can actually use that for decoration, but it also marks what you want to do when you want to uh, use your wheel and mark where your holes are going to go. This little arm right here attaches to the inside of this, and that helps you follow along. So you got a, a continuously straight edge along your leather, and this little attachment right here actually removes leather from the, uh, the piece. It removes a little strand of it so you can stitch and groove in there. Um, so you definitely want this. Again, this is called a uh, Pro Stitching Groover. And it's the blade and the whole setup. And it comes with a couple attachments as well as a little Allen key. So you definitely want that. Um, you're going to definitely want one of your... Um, you're going to want these little things. These are like... Um, I forgot the, the name of it. I'll put it down below or it'll be in here. But... What these do is actually end up grooving 
uh, or rounding off the edge of your leather a little bit. It removes just a little bit of leather on the edges to kind of soften it and round it. So then you can use your grooving tool. So you definitely want to, uh, at least one of those, if not two, because one of these is actually a uh, one of these is actually wider than the other one. So you want that depending on your thickness of leather. Um, definitely going to want a wheel. This little wheel like this here. Um, this wheel right here, it spins and those little those little spurs, I guess for lack of a better term, that marks your leather. So every one of those little points actually will indicate where your hole is going to be for when you stitch. Now they make uh, one like this, and uh, they have this kind because this wheel actually comes off, and they make different different uh, distances. Meaning, between the two points that you see there, they make wheels that the points are are closer together or wider apart. And you can uh, take this uh, you can take this off and, and attach different ones so you can have a different uh, spacing. Um, here it is here. Uh, so this is your you know there's your uh, spacer embossing set. And as you see, there's different wheels here, and each one of those is a slightly different uh, distance between the points, this one being the furthest. Uh, I don't use this one very often, and that's because it's so wide, and that because of these shoulders with the, the screws. I, um, I did mess up uh, a leather sheath a while back when I was trying to do that, and I had to go around the edge, and the screw here, the little bolt, actually scratched the leather, messed up the sheath completely. So. I stick with this one simply because I don't vary my stitching di distances on any of my sheaths. They all get the same distance, so I use that. Um, this one here, this is really nice. This is a grooving tool. This here actually is really nice because you can adjust the depth uh, by changing this. You, you turn this, and as you turn this, this point right here, this little V, hopefully you guys will see that the V actually gouges the leather out. So as you turn this, it actually just starts to disappear and it recesses or it comes back out and you can go deeper or shallower through your leather. Definitely something that I would recommend using. That's really good. Um, you can use this. This is basically just a hole punch. Um, it's got a diamond type shape on the tip of it and you use it to punch your holes in the leather. Uh, I have in the past tried. Now it's a cheap set, but I've tried to do it and it's these uh, um, little like, um, what do they call them? Uh, uh, it's a, they say it's stainless steel, but it, they've been coated black and it's these little tools that punch holes in leather. Um, I've never had any luck with this because every time I go to punch it through the, the layers of leather that I have, it never gets through all the way because they're not deep enough, and it sticks, and I'm trying to have to pull it out of the leather, and it really messes things up, so I don't even use those anymore. So I usually end up, um, I put a needle inside my drill press, that little wen drill press you see me use. I put a needle in it, and I turn it on, and then I poke all the holes after using uh, this little tool right here to mark them all out. I'll poke all the holes in there and uh, I'll actually turn the drill press on and the needle's actually spinning and I'll do that. And that works pretty good. So that's kind of what I do. Um, again, here's an awl. Uh, a lighter, you're gonna want a lighter because as you go to sew and, and when you're done with your stitch, you cut it, you'll light that. Because I used wax coated thread, I would recommend doing something like that. Uh, so. This here, this little craft tool you see here, this, I just bought one of these from Tandy. Everything I bought here is pretty much from Tandy leather, except for my thread uh, and some of the needles. But this is pretty sharp, and what this does is, as you might have seen in the video, if the B-roll worked out well, um, you stamp your curve. Works really good for sheaths, except I bought only an inch, and I need, uh, I need a couple different sizes because the sheath here actually has, these are different curves. And so I bought an inch just to try it out. They are not the faint of heart. They're pretty expensive. So if you don't have this, I recommend, again, going, falling back to this, drawing your lines, and then using a very sharp uh, blade in the tip of it. You can cut and curve it, and then you can soften these up both with the, uh, I use the grinder to hand sanding sandpaper, and then I use the grooving tool, or that tool that, that cleans up the edges and all that. I forgot the name of it, but, uh, but you can get these things. They're really nice. They come in a lot of different sizes, but again, they can get pretty expensive. I think this one was 35 bucks or something, my cost, because I get uh, a discount. Uh, so I think they're like 35 bucks, but it's a pretty well-made product. Uh, threads, um, I've got a bunch of different kinds. I'm really liking this. Uh, it's called Tiger Thread, and I got this from uh, um, uh, Leather. Oh, brain farted. I forgot the company's name now. Oh, shame on me. I'm sorry. I'll put it right down below here. But I really like this. It's called Tiger Thread. I just learned about the company uh, from my leather buddy Tanner at Clarge Leather. 
He uses this, and you guys have seen how this works on a couple of sheets that I've made because I've done that chain stitching, I think is what they call. This is the thread I use. Um, I've got plenty of different colors. They make even more. And this knife in particular is going to be getting, or this sheath, is going to be getting um, the blue, and I think it's getting the tan. It's getting these two colors, and the leather itself is going to be a little bit darker than this. So it's really nice, but I can do this. It's going to get a chain stitch design. Um, so you're going to need thread of some sort, and you're going to need to thread the needles that go with that thread. And uh, I picked up these, these needles here. They're John James. Uh, Tanner recommended these. They're really good. And what was nice about the uh, um, um, Rocky Mountain Leather Works, that Rocky Mountain Leather, uh, remembered, uh, they, when you buy the thread, they have needles that are recommended for that thread. So that's really nice. Uh, but I like their thread for doing the double stitch. I like that. Otherwise, I go to Tandy, and I have the three basic colors right here. And I forgot, this is like a 1.5 or something like that, millimeter, one point something. Uh, that Rocky Mount leather, the thin stuff, I do chain stitching, that's one millimeter, 0.1. This is uh, 1.5 or something like that. They also had another number for it, I forgot. But this I really like for doing a single stitch, a single saddle stitch. These are my three colors I go to. I don't do anything else there. But if you didn't want to chain stitch, I did actually buy some of this, and I'm going to try it. It's called Microcord, and it's 1.18 millimeters. And uh, it's a little bit thicker, so you could actually use this with your threads or just use this on its own. Uh, but uh, it makes you have to have a bigger needle hole or uh, in your leather. So, um, so that's about it there. Uh, basically, just the regular cutting stuff, um, scrap. You don't need any of the rivets or anything right now because if you're not going to do any of that, and I'm not very good at it, I do have a punch, but I don't use it too often, other than uh, for some sheets when I'm sewing thicker leather. Um, but that's about it. You're going to want. Um, something rubbery to cut on, like I'm cutting on this black mat here. You're going to want something like that, as well as you're going to want a granite cutting board. Uh, let me get this out of the way here. You're going to want something like these right there. You're going to want something like that. Um, these are the small ones that I was using before. The kids were using it in a past video from last year when we were practicing. This is a 12 by 12. I picked this up from Tandy. Real pretty piece. I love it. But if you guys know the last one I had, I used for my Wicked Edge base system. You're definitely going to want one of those if you're going to tool. Now, I'm not going to touch into the tooling and some of the other things because this video is not supposed to be that long. And that will be a whole different video series. So uh, I'll do something like that in the tooling aspect. But anyhow, guys. Oh, real quick. And you guys have recently seen the video. I would recommend a stitching pony of some sorts. Uh, this is the one, again, I, I picked up from Romanov Tools um, out of Russia. It's really nice, but you guys can start out. Uh, check YouTube, make one of your own, or check Tandy Leather. I think they got a, a very inexpensive one. It's like 25 or 30 bucks. It's a basic one. You got to sit on a stool or a chair to use it, but it should work out pretty good for everybody starting, but I recommend a stitching pony. Definitely get a stitching pony. Um, and that's about it. So uh, I think that about covers it. I'm running out of battery. So again, guys, I do appreciate it. Uh, like, share, subscribe, all the good stuff. Remember, keep me from the bottom of the YouTube bucket. And to all those coyotes out there, big shout out to you, as well as all those warriors. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's been a busy 2019 so far, and it's only getting busier. So again, take it easy, guys. We'll see you later. Bye.